Hello and welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Today is a very special day for me. I am actually working on teaching somebody else how to actually code. And I'm going to be talking about that today. So, let's get to it. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, thank you very much. Please remember to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications about this. So, the first thing uh, that I may like to talk about is uh, that uh, learning the code for me has been quite difficult in the past because um, nobody else was actually teaching me anything unless I, uh, uh, unless that somebody else was on, on a book or a video course. So it's very hard to find somebody that actually knows the trade uh, and in the uh, specifics of, you know what, I wish to learn how to actually program, not just code some websites. Um, that's even harder to find. So recently, um, I get into a little personal project about uh, teaching um, my wife how to actually code uh, or program. And her interests are basically websites. So that's what I am uh, showing some of my previous um, uh, learning material here. You're watching this on YouTube. You're actually seeing um, a little bit of how do you call it, uh, exercise files from Co-Academy uh, exercises that I did uh, a couple of years ago. So, um, when teaching to code, um, the first thing that most people wonder is uh, what l programming language are you going to teach? And I don't go to, into that route yet first. Uh, because most of the time, the programming language that you wish to learn um, is basically dictated uh, by your actual job. For example, in my case, since I am a, a database administrator by trade, um, then SQL is my bread and butter for every single day. And most people, especially those who are um, developing websites, don't really see that much of databases uh, unless uh, you actually need to do um, uh, a base, some basic queries or even a call to a view or something like that. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, instead of um, uh, thinking too much about what programming language to learn first, um, I will actually ask myself, well, what is the final product that I wish to build? And let's say that if you want to build a website, then you are going to be choosing HTML, um, uh, CSS, and JavaScript as your programming language. And that's just the basics, because um, that's just for the starting point. And if you are working with databases, SQL, and maybe PLSQL if you are working with Oracle, and transact SQL if you are working with Microsoft uh, SQL Server. Um, and basically, whatever you want to build is, one, is what is going to basically dictate what you are going to be learning. Uh, that's pretty much it. So, um, uh, before I'm not teaching yet um, the web development part of JavaScript right now, and many may ask me why did I choose JavaScript as my first, uh, as the first programming language for my wife. Well, uh, the truth is that JavaScript doesn't require me or anyone else to install it in any place. Uh, if you already have a, a Windows, a recent Windows installation or Linux installation or Mac OS X installation, even BSD. In whatever operating system you're running, you are probably going to find uh, an Internet Explorer of some kind, a web browser of some kind. So uh, most likely than not, JavaScript is enabled by default, so you don't really need to build anything. So that's the first reason that um, everybody already has JavaScript installed, and you can actually create code in JavaScript and and work from there. So uh, 
well that's the first the, that's the first reason uh, the second reason is that uh, with JavaScript you actually have access to most um, to most of the of the basics of programming in many other um, programming languages especially especially the ones that comes from or have um, uh, C or C style languages as uh, as the main branch for example Java JavaScript uh, which I may say that JavaScript and Java um, don't have anything to do with each other because JavaScript is basically working with websites with web pages and Java is a general programming um, uh, programming language using uh, object-oriented uh, programming so um, uh, it's worth to mention that um, basically with JavaScript it's quite easy to learn and I can actually teach the basic of most programming languages um, we include variables we include uh, uh, basic input and output for from a program um, managing loops if uh, conditional logic and basically and basic loops and um, even functions so um, it's a very um, basic programming language it's not hard to learn and you can basically see the 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 result immediately you, you don't really need to compile the program uh, since it's uh, javascript is interpreted so i can actually teach the difference between compile and interpreted so there are many advantages of teaching javascript and uh, the one thing that i have to say is that uh, you are going to um, lie to yourself if you believe that ja you only need one programming language many people that learn um, javascript believe that they can get away with just knowing um, javascript and many attempts have been done in order to allow javascript developers to create software on the server side and that's very great i guess um, because you can basically recy recycle a lot of your javascript knowledge to create server side uh, software using node.js for example and you can basically um, uh, reuse javascript in other environments besides the web browser um, the thing is that um, I'm not getting into that yet. Um, my plan is to teach the very basics of programming um, uh, by addressing these subjects one by one, uh, variables, for example, and how to work with, uh, with data. Uh, for example, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're actually seeing my first example my first program uh, the first program that i was teaching is a basic hello world uh, which is um, in javascript if you don't know uh, you actually need uh, a couple of files uh, to get your program running let me see here so i do have a couple of files here one is index.html which is a basic html file uh, with nothing but a simple paragraph and on line 7 if you are watching this on youtube on line 7 um, i do have a script tag with a source um, calling the the name of the of the script.js file and that's pretty much on line 7 is pretty much the place where um, i am calling out the script and the script is in a separate file named script.js that's for javascript and what i'm doing basically is um, during the javascript execution of the script uh, i am just calling an alert an alert uh, window with the message hello world in spanish so let's see how does that look and this is the final result very simple stuff hello world in spanish uh, in a pop-up and i am getting a, a simple paragraph here just to show off so that was the first program um and um, on this alone we are seeing a lot of things that many uh, coders or programmers or developers need to see and take attention of 
for example, the tool that I am using here um, is Visual Studio Code, one of my favorites at the time. And it's very useful. Uh, it does have the two, I'm using this because it's free and it does have the two main tools for myself or even three tools. The main, the main features are uh, line numbers. Um, if, if I keep writing uh, code, I'm getting line numbers here. And I'm getting color text. So whatever I do here, for example, declaring a variable, I can declare a variable and I and I get this uh, color coding and even syntax highlighting. Uh, here I'm seeing like a, I'm missing a, a semicolon at the end. So I'm getting syntax highlighting, synth, uh, error, error highlighting too. So it's really easy to get around here, especially if you are a web developer uh, programming in JavaScript and you are going to have a, a very simple time here. Um, um, highlighting your own mistakes and see what's going on. So um, let's add, for example, uh, I just added a, a line comment at the beginning. Uh, uh, well, uh, you can actually add comments here to your code, which are basically text that is ignored by the uh, script, the the Java uh, script engine. It's very useful for programmers to understand what the code is actually doing. Mm -hmm. Let's change the, the, the message here. And let's do a simply editing here. So it's 2019. There we go. And if I refresh the website here, I'm getting the hello world in 2019 message here. Uh, very simple stuff. JavaScript is one of my favorite programming languages. Un, even though it's not one of the uh, of my main ones, I don't really use it that much. I I only see it when I need to publish something on the website. Um, basically, I use it to print out on the website uh, the results of a database query with a table information, something like that. So I don't use it that much. I'm not a web developer and I don't build websites from scratch. I'm basically a low level WordPress user. So that's pretty much it. But for learning purposes, teaching programming with JavaScript has been very useful. Um, Obviously, I was um, I ended up the lesson of today by teaching about variables. The entire lesson was um, teaching variables, um, teaching my wife how to use the tool, how to use Visual Studio Code, um, the different uh, encoding of uh, the different encoding selections for for the source code, which are very important if you are saving this on on a web server you need to take into that into consideration. And for example, um, the, the, uh, this, the end of line sequence in Windows is um, new line, the return carriage, carriage return, and then the new line character. Since I'm saving this on a Linux server, I'm going to be using uh, the LF um, end of line character. Um, it's not needed that you understand what I'm saying right now. It's not a big deal anyway. Um, uh, but the truth is that if you are working with websites on a on a remote server, you are more likely than not um, saving that website into a Linux box. Um, anyway, uh, I'm basically I was teaching the basics of variable declaration and variable types, for example, this. Uh, this is another variable. Let's see. It's a variable called is Monday. And let's say that uh, it's false because today is not Monday. 
that's a boolean variable which can basically have one or two values uh, which are true or false um, i may also create uh, a name variable which may contain um, an entire name surrounded by uh, it, la as in many programming languages um, languages you need to surround the a string of text between double quotes or single quotes. In my case, I am using double quotes to 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 basically create a, a string here. You can also use um, double quotes, uh, single quotes for restored strings. And this may or may not be useful for you to escape double quotes. Um, uh, let's say like this, maybe like that. And here, when you are writing strings, you may come to the realization well what happened if i want to actually use double quotes here in some part of the string well i guess you can you can actually do it here on name too uh, because i am surrounding the entire string on single quotes um, uh, but the problem comes when you want to use double quotes or and single quotes on the same string for example, if I if my string reads, I I am a person, um, and I'm surrounding the entire string on double quotes. That's not a problem, uh, but my problem may come if I need to use double quotes as part of the string. So. Yes. I need I need that. Let's assume that I want to surround um one word between double quotes and here we do have a problem because uh, the beginning of the string is with double quote with double quotes and the end of the string is detected with double quotes. So I need to use a technique called escaping double quotes here, which is basically uh, telling JavaScript that in this case this character double quote is not the end of the string it's basically another character so i need to escape it with the inverse dash with the reverse dash i don't know how how do you call it actually well never mind um you escape the character this way and so with that you can actually have the string i am a person dot space yes i need between double quotes that so all of this was being teach uh, today. Um, something else that I already teach in today's class is uh, uh, operators. And operator precedence. So what is that? Well, basically, uh, operators are the basic one. And the most used one is the equal sign. For example, here, let's say that year, which is a variable that I define on line number two, uh, I'm going to change it to 2018. So here, the equal sign is basically assigning uh, the, the value 2018 into the year value, into the year variable, I may say. Um, after the assignment operator, uh, one of the most used uh, are the arithmetic operators, that's the plus, um, the plus sign, uh, the minus, the, the division sign, and, and the multiplication sign. So these are the basics for making addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. For example, uh, the year is going to be equals to 2018 plus one. So this expression is going to resolve first, and I'm going to get uh, 2018 plus one is 2019, and 2019 is going to be a sign 
uh, using the assignment operator into the year variable it's very simple stuff and obviously uh, operator precedence uh, which means that not all um, operations are executed in order from left to right we may have for example here of uh, phi an operation like phi plus five um, multiplicated by then so many people made the mistake of thinking well uh, 5 plus 5 is going to be 10 and 10, 10 times 10 is going to be 100 uh, in computing most of the time uh, or may I say all the time um, on programming languages uh, the first thing that happened is the multiplication in this case we are going to be multiplicating 5 times 10 and, and to the result of that we are going to be adding 5 and why does this happen even if the plus sign is on the left side of the equation well there is something called uh, operator precedence which comes this way first uh, i believe it's going to be executing uh, the pow I, the power um operator i believe it's called let me see if, if i found it somewhere around here i don't see it it's not a very use you stop sign anyway well never mind uh, i don't have the first thing is the power i believe um that's for exponentials uh, after that is i believe is multiplication and division after that uh plus and minus and that's basically it i guess so basically uh, the first thing that runs is the 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 power of then multiplication and division on the same level and lastly uh, plus and minus obviously uh, upon all this we do have the overriding open and closing parentheses which means that if i want that five uh, plus five comes first all i have to do is use my parentheses to surrender that to surround that between parentheses and now i do have five plus five um, that that adding is going to execute first and then the times 10 is going to become uh, later so uh, most programmers already know this by heart maybe um uh, that's basically it that's what i'm teaching right now uh, let me see my notes and um, um, I teach my I teach my Wi-Fi to use the prompts in JavaScript um, basically bar name for example and I can use a, a prompt method or function to to ask for her name for example um what's your name for example and what i'm doing here on this single line is ask for her name and assign the result of that prompt into the variable name later i can use another met another method to use the name into the pr into um, into the JavaScript script for example here it's going to ask me what your name and it's going to print out my name here nothing fancy uh, but this is very useful actually and we can address here the fact that um, even though the programs execute one line after the other by invoking a prompt method i am actually waiting for uh, the input from from my human side to be executed before continuing so uh, this can be five seconds this can be five minutes um, so execution is stopped at line two until the prompt uh, is resolved even if i don't uh, give any data um the program is going to continue with nothing there
because there is no value. So as you can see, uh, there are uh, many things that I've been teaching lately. Um, I've been on this a couple of days only. Uh, what, else did, uh, what else did I teach? Um, the difference between um, between uh, uppercase and lowercase names on variables, that's very important because you can naturally declare this uh, a variable name x, for example, and you declare that with bar space x and equals to them, for, for example, for a, a number. And we can create another variable like this. And in this case, um, I do have a variable named x, and I have another variable named x too. I mean, uh, another variable named the same x. The difference is that the first x is lowercase and the second x is uppercase. On JavaScript and in many other C style languages, um, the case of the name of the variable matters. So these are different variables. Let's do an, a simple alert to show it to show it off to show how does this works. And x equals and let's concatenate the value of x and let's concatenate the value of uppercase x and let's concatenate the actual value of uppercase x so let's execute this and the script is showing me um, the value of lowercase x is 10 and the value of uppercase x is 20. so as you can see um using different case on this uh, creates different variables and this is really important because in javascript it's not necessary to declare variables if you use a variable that doesn't exist uh, uh, it's going to be working for example here if i wish to after that create another alert with the y variable let's say a y variable like this an uppercase y if i save this and execute i get my first message and i get nothing then but my int my web browser is not telling me that something is wrong for example let's say that i delete the uppercase uh, declaration and i wish to to show off the value of of x and I do this. So during declaration, I declare bar lowercase x equals 10. And on my alert, I use an uppercase x. Then I only see a program with uh, a couple of lines. And I say, well, I just want to print out the value of x. And nothing happens when I try to run the script. Why is that? And you can spend hours trying to decipher why these couple of uh, lines are not working properly. And uh, especially on, on variables uh, with single letters like X, Y, and something like that, and O, uh, which is not so clear um, at first glance that the name of the variable is in lowercase and the uppercase say they seem to be pretty much the same so you may take some time before realizing that the casing is really important here especially because uh, javascript uh, doesn't doesn't do anything and it, it actually does if you create if you try to use a variable that doesn't that is not declared yet or or a variable that doesn't have a value yet what, what JavaScript is going to do is that JavaScript is going to actually create the variable on runtime and then use it. So let's say that on our example, we get back to um, declaring lowercase x with a value of then. On the next line, I 
use an alert command um, to print out the value of uppercase x which doesn't exist yet and let's say that i use x and i assign the value of 1 to x to uppercase x and then i use another alert the same alert i can actually use the same alert so i had never declared uppercase x before but since i tried to use uppercase x before javascript is going to uh, declare the variable for me and when i assign a value into that variable now now that variable is going to be working so if i do this oh wait did i save it there we go now if i do this it doesn't do anything anyway I guess I actually need to declare it then. Let's see. So I guess I'm wrong here. There we go. It says undefined. And then it prints out one. Wow. Let's see. So it says here that uh, on the on the first alert on the first alert now it does something. I guess that's because now I had declared X before. Uh, on the first alert, x is undefined because it doesn't have a value yet. And on line number four, I am assigning and declaring a uppercase x. And on the last line, I am printing out uppercase x and now it's working properly. Well, some experimentation here. And right after that, uh, I had to explain why she doesn't need to define uh, the type of data on JavaScript for a variable. Uh, for example, you only declare bar, space, and the name of the variable. You don't say what type of data is going to contain the variable because it's a weak uh, type uh, uh, programming language. That means that you don't really need to care too much about the uh, data type of your uh, variables at creation time. When you are using um, a variable on your JavaScript program, then you are going to be uh, uh, caring about that because you may try to, uh, you may like to know if the value stored inside a variable is actually a number. If your intention is to use that variable into in a, uh, inside an arithmetic uh, formula later. So weak typing is part of JavaScript. Uh, what else did I teach today? How to escape uh, as, um, the double quotes and single quotes on a string. Um, what else? Operator precedence. And lastly, the the oh the assignment operators. Well, I already teach how the assignment operator equals works before, and let's say that now i wish to increment or decrement the or change the value uh, in an incremental or decremental manner for x so i declare bar x equals to 10 and now i wish to add another 10 into that value so it's going to be um, x is going to be equals to whatever x is um, storing plus 10. so to do that i do x is going to be equals to the same value x plus another 10. So on line number three, I am adding 10 to whatever to whatever um, x is doing right now. So let's create an alert to show the value of 10 right after that. And let's copy and paste the same lines a couple of more times. Save it and execute. So the first time is going to print out 20 because it's adding 10 plus 10. The next time 30 because I add into 20 another 10 and so forth. Up until 60. I can do this with a loop, yes, be, because I haven't teached that yet. I'm not showing it here. And um, obviously, this happens so often on loops, on programming, that um, there are other ways to actually 
continually add numbers into this this very same variable. For example, uh, another way to do this would be with this. Now, what I typed on line four was x is, uh, plus equals x plus equals 10. What that means is basically an abbreviation of x equals x plus 10. It does happen so often that now um, somebody invented on JavaScript how to basically do this very same operation with less characters. You can do this with with less than less equals and times equals and and div division equals and now uh, for example in the case of of loops we may use counters let's for example say i do have a variable called y i and this begins at one with a value of one and i do wish to increase the value of the counter by one only so i may i may say i is equals i plus one and this is totally valid this is functional this is going to work i can also say i plus equals one and Add it by one by one, element by element, in increments of one of units happens so often that this two has its own abbreviation. In this case, is the plus plus and the plus plus uh, operator, which is called a unary operator. What basically happens is the same. It increments the i variable by one, and you can do this with minus minus. So you can decrement by one single unit uh, the value of the variable i. And that's basically all I cover today. So reflections on this. Um, I decided to create this episode because I quickly realized that before teaching all this, I actually need to prepare a class for this. Why? Because the first class I was shooting all over the place. I was explaining things about PHP. I was explaining things about servers, about um, UTF-8. I was uh, uh, basically I was touching a lot of subjects that didn't have to do with the basic of programming in the short term. Uh, so I decided to actually prepare a class for this and it worked very well. I'm going to cover I'm going to be using my time and her time in in actually uh, learning the actual basics of programming and not wasting too much time actually. And I am I am realizing that uh, you don't really understand a subject unless you are able to actually teach it correctly. And that means that by teaching, I am actually learning how to code. So. Uh, I guess it's a win-win situation here. Well, uh, that's all for today. Thank you for coming in, and I'm going to be seeing you tomorrow. Take care.